Hello, back again to do another unboxing and review. Today we have a smartwatch to look at. This is the M5, and it comes to us from, I can't tell you, because it's an unbranded generic. Now, if you're not familiar with what that term means, it essentially means a company makes an item, in this case a watch, and they do not put their name on it. Instead, they sell it to another company, and that company puts their name on it and marks up the price and makes some profit. Okay, so, um, now I'm going to go ahead and get into the features right away um, on this, or the specs, and that's because this will probably be how you're going to find this watch if you choose to buy it, because the retailer you might get from might not call it the M5, they might call it something else. So let's look at these specs and um, help you find the same watch. Okay, so first of all, this is a 4G watch, um, which is actually a pretty big step up since most of these are usually 2G or maybe 3G, but 4G, um, I'm liking that. Anyway, uh, moving on, it has, as far as the, the processor, it's an MTK 6737M. So it comes from MediaTek, and looking at the number designation, I can tell you this is a 64-bit um, chip. And it is a quad core, an ARM Cortex A53, so you have four of those. And then it's, uh, those run at 1.1 gigahertz. All right, operating system is Android 6.0. Okay, memory, we'll start with the RAM, one gig. And for a watch, that'll suffice. You don't really need four gigs of RAM for a watch. Um, okay, ROM, or yeah, storage space, is eight gigs. Now, frequency, we already talked about it being 4G, but I have here GSM quad band, uh, WCDMA quad band, and then there's uh, TDS, SCDMA, and that's B34 and 39, FTD, LTE, that's B1, B3, B7, B8, B20, uh, TDD, LTE, and that's B38, B39, B40, and B41. Okay, now I'm um, going down to the um, camera which it does have a camera on here, as we'll see. It, they claim it to be 5 megapixels, but that's because it's a, actually a 2 megapixel sensor, and it uses interpolation to get up to 5 um, megapixel quality. But it's truly a 2. And you're going to see that on a lot of these. Um, almost all of them are around 2 megapixels. And some will say they're 5, um, but they, they all, at least I've seen, they've all been about 2 um, megapixel sensors. Okay, um, battery is 600 milliamps per hour. Screen size is 1.54 uh, 1 inches. Uh, resolution is 240 by 240. This, as far as sensors, has a G sensor, and it also has an optical heart rate sensor, and the shell is made out of metal. Okay, um, let's go ahead and I will, I usually look around the box at this point, you know, but um, this one is, uh, <laughs> Yeah, it is a black box with only writing on the front, which just says Smartware. And I'm not even sure if that's a brand. I think that's just, yeah. Anyway, so um, here we go. Let's get to the unboxing. So, okay. My user manual just came out there. Yeah, all right. So, um, yes. Oh, you can get this in different colors. Um, I got it in black, timeless black. All right. So... Okay, it comes uh, wrapped on this nice little foam here, little sponge deal. Um, yeah, I can feel the casing is, in fact, metal. The band is, um, yeah, this kind of rubbery, um, but it is grippy. As you can see, it has a whole bunch of sipes here, so that should be good. It doesn't slide all over your wrist. Okay, but before we look at the actual watch, let's see what else is in the box. There's this little sub compartment here and there's a little something on the bottom let's pull that out okay so um right here um i'll cover this up okay right here i got a barcode sticker okay and the rest of the box is uh yeah. works okay now let's see what's in this little sub box All right, there's how you charge it. Okay, so yes, this is just a micro USB cable. Um, and the reason I'm going to spend a little time point this out is because a lot of smartwatches in this uh, range, uh, as far as price and um, uh, specs, will come with uh, magnetic charging. Not wireless charging, magnetic charging. So essentially you have a, 
magnetic um, thing that snaps to the back magnetically to the watch. And then in that little um, plug, there'll be little pins that touch the little uh, sensors or just little tabs on the back of the watch, and hence it charges. And you can just pull it off real quick, you know, quick snap, quick, uh, quick on, quick off. This one, however, does go back to the I'm using micro USB. Okay. Now, um, so let's just quick look, look at the user manual here. I'll just uh, scan it by your camera real quick. Oh, and on this side, it is Chinese. Okay. All right. So um, let me let's go look at the watch now. Okay, so first impressions, it's um, it's decent heavy. I wouldn't say really heavy, and it's not really light either. Um, so it's night in the middle. Um, so I'd say good weight. Uh, it does in fact um, come with this um, little screen protector already on there. So you just gotta pull that. So that that's nice that it comes um, ready to go. Let's look at the band here. this metal yeah so we have metal clasp all right and as I already said the band is oh, on this side it's smooth on this side it has that texturing grip okay um, on the side here we have that is a button and um, let's see if that button's plastic or metal uh, maybe even the metal button. Um, all right, going around. There's your camera. You'll notice how the camera is. Um, it's situated in a little different spot than a lot of other ones. A lot of other ones would have the camera here. Um, this one has it up here. So I guess as far as taking pictures, you would just kind of tilt your wrist and hit the um, shutter button as opposed to kind of doing this Iron Man thing where you kind of look like you're shooting some laser out your fist. Um, yeah, so. Okay. On this side, okay, there's our door. I'm going to open it up for charging. All right. So there you go. Micro USB, as we already knew. Close that up. Okay, let's look at this uh, heart rate sensor on the back. <laughs> they got a little protective cover on that. That's nice. Um, so there you have, that's optical sensor um, for measuring your heart rate. Okay, there's something written on the back here. 3D sound. Oh, okay, so there's our speaker. You see those little holes up towards the band. Yep. And here is um, a little thing with looks like a SIM card. I assume that's a door that slides open. Let me see. Judging by the arrow, I guess I slide it. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. It just slid off, slides off, and um, that looks to be that's either micro or nano SIM card. Um, I'll let you know once I get the thing set up. And I do not see anywhere to put um, a trans flash or, as we call them, a SD card, micro SD card. I don't see a spot for that. All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and charge it up, and we'll take it from there. All right, so I've gone ahead and uh, charged the watch. I've also done the initial setup, the inserting my SIM card and all that. So um, I already have the watch turned on, so I'm just going to wake it up by pushing this button here on the side. That's like the main button, since there don't appear to be any other buttons. So we'll go ahead and hit that, and boom. All right, so... You can see this is the watch face I selected. However, if you would like a different watch face, don't worry because there's quite a few of them. How to change it is you push the screen, I'll push in the center, and you hold. And then you can see this comes up, this kind of slide to select type deal. And as you can see, there are quite a bit of watch faces to choose from. Um, other smart watches I've had had like six maybe. This has, seems to have quite a bit more. Uh, the majority of them um, are styled in this like classic analog type manner. However, there are um, some digital ones like that. And my the ones I prefer are like this one here, where it's, you get the digital readout, and also um, there's some other little um, information bits in there. Um, I don't know if it's coming up, but we have the date, 
the date up there, um, and then anyways. Okay, and I think, so yeah, steps, I've already walked. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and select that. All right, so now, back at the time, whatever face you choose, that'll be your like your home screen. Now, to navigate to the other options, and all the features of this watch, you essentially think of it like a cross. You can go up and down, left and right, all right? And depending on what way you go, you get to a different group of items, and then sometimes within those, there's more menus, which you'll swipe. Yeah, so let's just go ahead and demo it. So I'm gonna go ahead and swipe right, which essentially is like moving to the left, if you think about it. It'll make sense when I do it here, see? You swipe right, and then you see how it kind of looks like we went over to the left. Um, all right, so in this one here, this is kind of like your workout options. And you can see there's cross country, a half marathon, a full marathon, riding bikes, um, running indoors, running outdoors, walking. All right, so if you're going out for your exercise or workout, um, you'll select whatever one of those uh, corresponds to what you're doing. So um, now we're going to go back um, to the, our home screen, which is the time. You can do that in two ways. You could either push the button here on the side, and it brings you back here. Or, if you want, you can swipe the other direction that, from how we got here. So I'll swipe this way. And you see, there you go. Okay. Now, um, let's try, we went, le well, we went off to the left side, so let's go up real quick, or slide down. There you go. So here, um, you have a quick uh, four little uh, informations, actually five, and it'll be, and actually there's some more. But anyways, let's just look at these four for right now. You have your remaining battery life, that in this case here is 77%. You have um, your network, um, what network you're on, and how um, good your reception is currently. So I um, right now I'm using 3G, and I have three out of four bars. All right, and there also appears now that we're in this. We can swipe left and right. You can tell that by those three little circles on the bottom. It means there's more things to look at. In this case, three other menus. So I'll swipe right. Okay, see so we have there. Okay, Bluetooth, and um, yeah, so. I think that's like brightness or something on the bottom there. Anyways, and swipe the other way. And you can see we can quickly go to airplane mode or, or and there's an SOS button. So, all right. So, um, those are, I guess, your hot keys or whatever you want to call them. Now, let's go um, down to the home screen again. So, we all go ahead and swipe, uh, what is it, up, which essentially is moving the thing down, right? There we go. Now, um, let's go actually down. So, I'll swipe up. And now you can see here. Now here, this is, um, I believe right here, this is your sleep monitor. I think it says how many hours you've been sleeping, how many hours of deep sleep, and then how many hours of light sleep. My guess is if like, you're moving a lot, then it doesn't detect you sleeping. And if you're moving a little, then maybe, whatever. So I think it uses just the movement of the watch to determine that. Anyway, um, so if we go one over here, you can see here we have a compass. Of course, it's wanting me to calibrate. I haven't calibrated yet, so, but, yeah, it does respond, so you can see, once it's calibrated, it should work, because it is definitely responsive. Ooh, okay, um, so let's go back over here. Um, now, this is, like, your pedometer. You have your how many steps you've taken, how many calories you've burned, and also how many kilometers you've walked. And you see they have represented, I don't know if it's coming up, but you see these little bars that are going around in a kind of circle. I assume they fill up as you walk more or whatever. Okay. Now, the next one. Okay, so here we have like a chart. Yes, I haven't been walking around much um, today, so I don't have that high. Um, but you can see. You can see it. It is recording some data down there. All right. Now, let's go over again. Oh, um, interesting. So now that we're at this, you can see there's also there's these three dots here. So that tells you there's more uh, menus, and you go up and down like the dots are to see them. Oh, look at that. So we have one week, and so you got to have like a record of how many steps you've done. Oh, like lately, four months. So you have four months, one week, and today. Cool. All right. So to get out of that, you see I just swiped. Now we're back at the main lower menus, we'll call that, and um, we'll go over one more swipe. Here, this is the um, heart rate. Now, interesting enough, you don't push anything to start this. You see, it once you get to this menu, it waits three seconds, and then it starts performing the test. And if you turn this around, you'll see 
well, it stopped now, but there's this green light sensor, and that's the optical heart rate sensor. And okay, um, so I did one already, and then you can see there are the numbers when I was trying it out. Okay, now, but again, to start this, you don't really push anything, you just wait, and then it automatically starts. Okay, in three seconds. Now, one over from that, here is the current tie, um, your weather. Um, below where my thumb is covering it tells you the town you're in and all that and uh, it's three degrees here but actually that's Celsius <laughs> so um, it's three degrees below freezing and you see it's snowing so I have a little snow icon there okay now next um, this appears to be a barometer all right and there's your altimeter all right so there's quite a few things on that lower menu now let's go back to the home, which is time, and I'll just take a shortcut by pushing the button. Okay, now the only direction we haven't gone yet is to the right, so I will swipe left. Again, however you want to phrase it. There you go. And now this is more of your conventional. Um, I think this is kind of more uniform with most smart watches. You have these little icons, so I'll just read them out quick in case they're not coming up. You have clock, setting, um, that the green there is to make a phone call. <laughs> uh, your browser, you have some tools, that's like your calculator and calendar. You have a camera, of course. Style, um, there's watch manage, I believe this is like your file, um, file manager. Yeah, so file manager and, alright. And then, okay, audio center, multimedia center, the Play Store, and more. And that's that. Did I miss any of them? Nope. So those are those. All right. So I've been using this for a few weeks now. And um, so how did it go? So let's start with connectivity. Um, do you connect it to your computer by opening this door and connecting the uh, micro USB? And yes, you can use your micro USB. You don't necessarily have to use the one that came in the box. Um, all right. So when you connect it to your computer, this comes up as um, the H5 as opposed to M5. So that's another hint that this is probably an unbranded generic and it's been sold by many companies and uh, whatever. The software was evidently written by the person who called it the H5. All right, so um, let's get beyond that. Since we are talking about connecting, I got to talk about this door here. Um, yes, so the, uh, the way you connect it to do data transfer or charge it is through this little door. And as you can see, there's no little tab. Yes, there's a little, little, little slot where you can put a fingernail, but there's no easy way just to pull this up. So, what you can see I'm doing here is I'm actually trying to get this open. And I'm not intentionally trying to be inept at it. This door is just a pain to get open. So usually it ends up in uh, about a couple minutes. Ooh, I got this one open relatively fast compared to other times. And there you go. But this little thing here can be quite a pain, and I have spent minutes just trying to get this thing open. Even resorted to like thinking, should I pull my pocket knife and stick it? No, okay, I won't do that. But when you have to start thinking like that, this is just, okay. I've actually gotten to the point where I was thinking about ripping this thing off and just leaving it like this, but I don't want to do that because, and that takes me to my next point about daily use of this. This isn't waterproof, um, or even, I would say, even really that much water resistant. Now, comparing it to the Duji over here, um, this one, this one is actually, um, well, not only daily um, water resistant, but it has, um, I believe, yeah, an IP, well, it's either 67 or 68, but the point is, is that this can actually go in the water. As were this, uh, not so much. Now, um, let's look at the back. Uh, as you saw earlier, you put the SIM card is right underneath this little sliding piece of plastic here, right there, and there is no um, seal, so there's no O-ring or anything. So if you're washing your hands, you know, so you have the phone, the phone slash watch on, right? Let me just put it on real quick here. So now, if you're washing your hands, if you put, you know, your hand in the water you're going to get water underneath the band between your wrist and the band and if that water seeps into where the SIM card is I can't see very good things coming from that so now you understand why I especially didn't want to leave this open even though it would be a lot more convenient if I left this little see here we go with that stupid yeah I really don't like this little door here um, it's not even a door it's like a little hatch but anyway so anyway getting back to the point it isn't water resistant at all, even if you leave all the things closed. So, um, again, 
I know it was never claimed to be that, so I mean, you're kind of ripping on it. It's kind of over the top, but the point is, is once you've gotten used to ones that are priced very similar or close to, such as this one, which does have all those features, you start to wonder if this is such a good deal anymore. All right, now that I've talked significantly about that, let's go on to the camera. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and show you um, some photos I took using this. Now keep in mind, I didn't mess around with the settings on this at all. I just went, you know, what it had arrived with, how it was set up, and I just went ahead and started shooting. So point and shoot mode. Um, and I, it is in its highest resolution. I did check to make sure. So I'm going to show you some photos and then also at different uh, different ranges so the object is at different uh, distance from the camera. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so now that we've seen the photos, let's get to talking about the camera. Um, not so much about, we already seen what it can take as far as quality, but I'm going to talk about the use of the camera. Now, earlier in this review, I mentioned where the camera is placed. And you can see it here at the top of the screen. And importantly, you'll notice how it's not pointing directly at us. And if you hold it like this, it's not pointing directly at us. So you get what I'm saying, it's mounted at this kind of uh, 45 degree angle there. And although, yeah, it goes, it makes the lines of the watch nicer because it kind of goes down with the band. Like you see there, like that. All right, so I thought I'd do this little demonstration to show you how to take a photo slash video using the camera on this smartwatch here. All right, so now if the camera placement was normal, it would be a simple matter of just pointing your wrist at pretty much whatever you want to focus on and pushing a button either on the watch's body or maybe even on the screen, okay? But the camera is not there. Instead, it's over there. So you're thinking, okay, so you hold your wrist this way and push a button or touch the screen. But still, no. Because if you look at what's being framed right now on the screen, it might not be coming up, but it is the upper corner of the ceiling not Mr. Dinosaur. Well, the reason for that is because, of course, the camera's angled at a 45-degree angle. Um, about 45-degree angle. Okay. And to compensate for that, you have to turn your wrist, like so, and now it would probably work. I say probably because I can't see the screen. I have no way to know if that's centered or if he's even in the picture at all at this point. Am I taking a picture of him, the floor, maybe the, up the door? I don't know because I can't see it. Now, if you, you know, and let's talk about actually pushing the shutter button. Guess where that is? On the screen. Yep, that's right, the same screen you can't see from this point of view. So, or position. So, what you have to do is you have to lean over your hand, right? Put your head over here. I'm going to do it with the camera, but you'd have to do this with your head. And you have to basically get in a position where you're curled over your arm. And essentially, it looks like you're trying to stare into your belly button. It makes no sense, it's hard as heck to use, and who decided to put the camera there? Alright, so to kind of summarize, um, let's talk about the things this watch does well. It, um, well, it has some pretty good hardware. You have the 64-bit processor when most other watches only have the 32-bit. This watch is also, it guarantees you 3G. You might even be able to get 4G if you're in the right coverage area, maybe have the right carrier. So um, other watches around this price point, it's um, 2G guaranteed, 3G maybe. So that, so this one obviously has the edge on that. Okay, um, the other thing is, let's talk about the camera, the positioning, absolutely horrendous, the positioning of the camera, but um, if you are lucky enough to actually get the camera in your subject lined up correctly, um, it does take pretty good photos. Um, keeping in mind this is just a camera attached to a smart watch. It does take pretty good pictures, and um, yeah. So then, of course, the bad things, we the camera positioning, I'm not even going to go into that again. Also, the lack of this magnetic charging, um, and I'm not so much talking about wireless charging. I'm talking about the fact that it lacks this, where you basically snap something to the back, magnet holds it on, and the little prongs touch the plates, and you're charging and transmitting data, and when you're ready to go, you just, boop, just pull it right off. This does not have that. Instead, you're going back to this whole flip open the door to reveal the micro USB port. 
uh, I have to say, too many competitors in the market now have this whole deal going on. This really seems like, uh, yeah, tech of old. So, eh. And, um, yeah, and again, the whole water-resistant thing. Um, I, every time I washed my hands while I was wearing this, I had to make sure I didn't get water in it. And for a watch, that's you can't do that. With the phones, it was one thing because, you know, well, I know they have phones that can go in the pool with you now, but it was, you get the point. This is attached to your hand, and it's going to go in water. Um, phones you could be a little more careful with. This, you shouldn't have to feel like you have to take off your wash to wash your hands. It's just, yeah. So um, now, with those things mentioned, let's get right into the, would I recommend this? And I would have to say, if you get it for a really good deal, why not? But if you're paying anywhere, even close to the $100 mark, I would try to find a deal on something like this. This just has, um, again, and this one here doesn't even have as good specs as this one does, but I'm assuming that now, around this time, they should have, um, you should be able to find a watch with equal specs and maybe a little more everyday use durability. So this is a definite eh, maybe on the recommendation.